Hello everyone, we are on chapter 6 and we are on paragraph 15, so I'm going to get started. Making mental pictures gives our conceptual life at once an individual stamp. Each one of us has his own particular place from which he surveys the world. His concepts link themselves to his percepts. He thinks the general concepts in his own special way. This special determination results for each of us from the place where we stand in the world, from the range of percepts peculiar to our place in life. And we had 15 summarized as follows. Because we each view the world from a particular place, making mental pictures gives our conceptual life an individual stamp. So basically in this paragraph he's just pointing out that um, it's making mental pictures that makes us individual and, and, and unique. And um, because of where we're, the situations we're all placed in, we all have sort of different mental pictures um, because of where we're born and the families we grow up in. So we each have a unique point of view from which we grasp things. Um, you know, like say someone from Canada has a, a little bit different mental pictures than say someone who lives in you know Europe you know we have these unique points of view um, and this just results because of where we are and whatnot um, I'm gonna move on to 16 distinct from this determination is another which depends on our particular organization our organization is indeed a special fully determined entity each of us combines special feelings and these in the most various varying degrees of intensity with his percepts. This is just the individual element in the personality of each one of us. It is what remains over when we have allowed fully for all the determining factors in our surroundings. And 16 is summarized as follows. How we form mental pictures also depends on our organization. Um, basically, 16 is pointing out that um, we have different, our feelings towards objects, the percepts that we encounter, that varies as well. You know, I might be very passionate about trees and somebody else might be very passionate about um, insects. So, you know, that is, um, you know, and then that, that person who's very passionate about insects might sort of be lukewarm towards trees and, and vice versa. So, um, what makes us individual as well as the feelings that we have with that we associate with our percepts and this degree this varies in um, intensity as well um, because you know obviously as we pass through percepts some of them will make us feel more intensely than others some of them will just pass by and we'll be like meh you know um, and that's what he's just trying to talk about here um, because this this chapter is about human individuality, so he's just talking about how mental pictures and whatnot give us that, and feelings give us that stamp of individual individuality. Um, I'm going to move on to 17. A life of feeling wholly, devote, whole, wholly devoid of thinking would gradually lose all connection with the world, but man is meant to be a whole. And for him, knowledge of things will go hand in hand with the development and education of the life of feeling. 17 is summarized as follows. A life of feeling devoid of thinking would eventually lose connection with the world. However, to be whole, knowledge of things will go with the development and education of our life of feeling. So basically this paragraph, I think is pretty straightforward. Um, if we were to just live this life without feeling, you know, we would just perceive things. As I said earlier, we would just be like robots perceiving things and whatnot. So a life of feeling gives us a sense of wholeness and um, it gives it, it, it's not, it doesn't go against our search for knowledge. It can enhance our search for knowledge. And as well, our life of feeling has to be developed and educated and that can help us with our search for knowledge. Um, so 
feelings just make life better and they they really bond us to the world um, and they are not to just be dismissed and thrown away they have a place they have a value in our concept of how we know the world um, and and whatnot and I'm just gonna move on to 18 feeling is the means whereby in the first instance concepts gain concrete life and that's pretty short so we summarized it as follows feelings are the means where concepts gain concrete life and that just basically means that the concepts we have gain a certain solidity because now we're associating it with our feeling life and he will talk about this on in further chapters but it um when you have feelings about concepts that will lead to action that will lead to um um the will taking in um taking power or whatnot he doesn't go into that at this point but that's sort of what it leads up to because if any of you are familiar with steiner's theories and whatnot he does talk about the human as a thinking feeling and willing being and um feeling is a way we gain um things become more concrete and then the next step obviously is the will aspect so he does go and discuss that i I probably shouldn't be dis telling you this, but that's just sort of another way concepts gain concrete life. But for now, it starts sort of with our life of feeling um, that we have these these concepts. So um, if you have any questions or comments, just send me a message. Um, and uh, I look forward to seeing you guys all again next time. Bye.